they've always been there. They've been around since 1989 and they're based in Salt Lake City, Utah. But I just, I don't know, I miss, I miss them. But today I'm gonna to fix that problem. Well, it all started because I was looking around on the internet for something and up, up popped this little guy. This is the Bellari PP532 passive preamp. It's $99. So passive, meaning it's got no power supply, no wall wart, no nothing. Just four inputs, one output, a volume control, an input selector, and we're done. I've described everything you need to know about it. I mean, the chassis, by the way, is steel. It feels very solid. 99 bucks. How did it sound, you wonder? Me too. But I'm going to get to that in just a second because since this is the first time I've reviewed a Bolari, I decided to do two products from them in one review. Oh, the second one. The second one is this one. This is the PA555 stereo preamplifier and it definitely has a power supply. Um, but the tube, now a lot of times when you see budget tube electronics, the tube is usually just a buffer. It's not the active gain stage. Eh, I don't know if that really counts as a tube preamplifier, but this tube preamplifier with a 12AX7 tube, the tube is the gain stage of the preamp. This one is $275. Um, it's not a headphone amplifier for some reason. There's others that look like this that are also headphone amplifiers. This is just a straight stereo preamp. Has zero feedback. I'll put up the, the rest of the specs right now so you can see it, but it's it's a pretty minimal device. It's all about performance, also has a steel chassis. I mean, it's, it's nicely made. Is it lavish? Mm, no. <laughs> it's very, very, very bare bones. But for Bellari, they're trying to give you the best possible sound quality for the lowest possible price. I like that. I like that straight ahead philosophy. I just picked these two pieces to review, but Bellari also offers some phono preamplifiers, um, an equalizer similar to the uh, shit Loki in a way. And I should get that at some point to compare against the Loki. They offer headphone amplifiers. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice selection of all very affordable, all made in the US products. And I will hopefully get to them in the future. But today I just wanted to focus on these two, especially the passive preamplifier. <laughs> now somebody pointed out that a passive preamplifier isn't a preamplifier strictly because it's not doing any amplification. The signal that goes in is the signal comes out and it can only be attenuated, meaning it can only be turned down. But be that as it may, it certainly played loud enough with this system I put together to do this review. And the rest of the system is the Bowers & Wilkins 607 S2 anniversary speakers. And the power amplifier is a Shit Agir. The source is an Oppo Blu-ray player. And I will tell you right off the bat, the sound of that system was very immediate, alive, clear, and transparent. Very, very much so. And to put it in some sort of context, I used a Shit Asgard 2, which is a headphone amplifier, but it's also a preamplifier, it's active. Uh, and I used that to compare against the passive preamp by Bellari. And you know what? Well, let's say a couple of things were obvious right away. First, the Shit had a warmer, fuller sound but it was nowhere as clear and transparent and pure as the PP532. No, not, not even close. So, you know, I, I've had experiences years ago with passive preamps and I always felt that though they could do that stuff pretty well, they tended to be kind of dynamically flat, not compressed per se, but just not have any jump to them. But this time, with the PP532, I, I didn't hear that at all. It had plenty of get up and go. But that purity, that transparency from a $99 preamplifier was kind of shocking. <laughs> I mean, I was not expecting that. And yet, that's what it delivered. Absolutely. So, I liked it. Today's music, well, the music I started with was this one. The Holly Cole Trio 
Temptation. This is a collection of Tom Waits songs. And to be honest, when this record came out forever ago, I didn't like it because I thought it wasn't Tom Waitsy enough. But now, well, it didn't take long before I figured out that she just took it in a completely different place. I mean, she's a sultry, sexy singer. You just feel something coming from her. And the band, those arrangements are incredible. And the bass player, David Pilch, I think that's how you pronounce his name. His bass is very forward in the mix, very full, very meaty sounding. And it is incredible. And the definition with the PP532 was spectacular. To put it in another context, I pulled out the PA555 tube preamplifier. Now this one, well, yeah, this one was definitely more dynamic but very, very clear. It's not a soft sounding tube device. Now, of course, you can change the tube and change the sound. I always have to say that. That's one of the coolest things about living with tube electronics is it's all, the tube is the amplifier. So you change the tube, you get a new sound. That's really cool. You can buy a new, one of these for you know 15 bucks or something and get a new sound. Next one up, next music selection is this one here, uh, the Rolling Stones live from the Vault series at the Marquee Club in 1971. Now what's really amazing about this, hearing this now in 2021, is this was new music. <laughs> they weren't playing oldies, they were playing music, songs from Sticky Fingers. So they're not an oldies band and they're not old. <laughs> so it's like different, it's a very different kind of Stones experience, especially compared, most of their live shows now are music from this time. And here they are playing it when it was brand new. And you just feel that energy. And Mick is just like right there. He is so right there. And just the band is, well, it's interesting also that they're kind of pulling it back a little bit because it's a club and not a giant theater. So it has, a, it just, if you're into the band, if you're into the Rolling Stones, or even if you're not, this is worth listening to because you just hear them in a completely different way. And both the, the tube and the passive preamps were doing a great job. Now I did go back again and again to the shit Asgard as a point of reference. And I have to say the Asgard, well, it was more laid back. Let me put it that way. It had plenty of detail, but it was of the more restrained type. You know, it wasn't so in your face as it is with the passive preamplifier. But the, yeah, but you know, I think the, the Passa one, the 532, was just connecting me to the music in a more immediate way. Because after all, being passive, I have no active stages in it whatsoever. What comes in, comes out. So it's super high in resolution and clarity. But again, it's not a perfect way of doing it because it, without that buffer stage, uh, you do feel a lack of, fullness at the real bottom end. Doesn't sound thin, not at all. Then there was this one. This is uh, one I've referred to in other reviews, Little Kruta. They're actually a chamber group that looks like that. But they're doing the music of Metallica. Metallica's And Justice For All album. I think, I think that's the name of the album. In any case, um, but they're doing string arrangements that had these great singers, four different guest vocalists. And I, I was getting goosebumps listening to this recording. It's just so good. It's an audiophile recording uh, done in Brooklyn. And the, the, the PP532 just, just dug deeper. I just heard more into it. And those performances and the orchestra, the chamber group were just, yeah. And I think this is a, this is a $99 preamplifier. Really good, really, really special. So I'm going to finish up with uh, Daniel Lenoir's Arcady record. This is, a, this is an all right record, but Daniel Lenoir has worked many times with Brian Eno, uh, who's definitely one of my heroes, but Daniel Lenoir is like a brother from another planet or mother or something, because he has an Eno-ish thing with sound and atmosphere and creating a space in a recording that's phenomenal. But he's Canadian. He brings that to the picture. He's, he lived in uh, New Orleans for a long time. So he has this kind of earthy quality that Eno doesn't have. 
But anyway, this is, his, as far as I know, his first solo album. I think it's a great recording. His voice is really, it's kind of folk music. It's, uh, there's so much here. <laughs> there's so much here. But again, and this is one record I haven't listened to in a long time, but the reason I was listening to this is because Daniel Lenoir was being interviewed on Mark Maron's podcast, WTF. And I will link to it below, by the way, because it's a phenomenal interview because Daniel Lenoir really gets into how he works, how he creates these sounds for his recordings. And uh, I love that inside look. So if, you're, if you share that interest in how people make sounds on records, not just the, the music or the notes, but to create an environment on a record, you should listen to that interview. It's really, really good. Anyway, speaking of really good, I came away really impressed with the two Bellari pieces. The PP532 Passive for $99. You know, as budget products go, it's a standout in what it delivers in terms of immediacy and transparency. It's lacking a tiny bit in dynamics, it's lacking in the bottom end, but in every other way, it delivers a lot. And the PA5552 preamp for $275, well, that's, that's taking it more in the audiophile direction of tubiness and juiciness and, and that sort of soul that you get with tubes. So I came away a fan of Bellari components, and I'll probably do more in the future. But right now, right now, in the present, I can tell you my name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. If you already have subscribed, Thank you so much for doing that. You might want to check out my Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. But while you're here, I have uh, reviews, many, many more reviews on playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and electronics reviews and, of course, music reviews plus interviews. And I think with that, I can now say my work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching, and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.